Jack Jack Big Things. About a week ago, somebody shared online that they had a sound design uh, AM FM radio, clock radio, alarm clock radio actually, uh, that they were having some issues with and they didn't know where to go to get it fixed. This is quite common because there's not a lot of people around that can fix this stuff and I'm no expert either, but um, this is a sound design AM FM radio um, and it has one of these flip clocks with the flip digits um, that spin and what she was saying was that the clock part doesn't automatically advance, but the radio actually works just fine. Um, and there's a reason why I actually picked this up and decided to work on it. It has something to do with karma. Let me explain. So, um, when I was probably eight or nine years old, I had a radio just like this. I don't know if it was the exact same model, but it was very, very similar. Um, and, uh, it stopped working. And so of course what I did with everything at that point, whether it was working or not, I took it apart. It looked like one of the capacitors had blown and uh, so I, I didn't even call them capacitors at that point. I called them cans because I didn't know what they were called. So what I did was I took something else that I had laying around, took a capacitor out of it, put it in the radio, uh, and then took it outside just in case it exploded, which it did. The capacitor exploded. I plugged it in. It made a big bang. And that was the end of that radio. Um, and I didn't touch circuit boards for, for quite a while after that because of that experience. Luckily, I was safe. Nobody got hurt, just made my ears ring a little bit. Anyway, when I saw this online and saw somebody asking for help, I decided to go ahead and try to give them a hand. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to see if I can take this apart and see what's keeping this clock from working. Just so you know, the radio does work. You can, you can hear the radio actually does work if I go through. Um, antenna's not that strong, but if you're careful, it'll actually pick up radio stations. So that part does work. What's not working is the clock. So. First thing we're going to do, this is in great shape, by the way. This is a sound design. Um, not seeing a model number on here. Um, but it is UL listed clock radio, sound design, FM AM. Uh, not really sure. It's got uh, um, tuning over here. It's got volume on this side. It's got on off button. Um, also auto on off like for the alarm functionality band sleep timer which is kind of cool and then it's got the clock set and the alarm set over here um, as well as uh, external speakers so you could plug this into external speakers or I guess headphones if you wanted to listen that way and it, and it looks great it's got my fingerprints on it now I'm gonna clean it up before I give it back but it is in great shape the plastic is in good shape but with that said let's go ahead and take it apart and see if this is gonna be a, a quick fix or not And before I do that, as you can hear, the radio's coming on. I'm gonna unplug this just to uh, make sure that I don't electrocute myself like I almost did back when I was eight or nine years old. So these knobs should just come off. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'm having a really hard time getting them off. So I'm gonna be really careful since this isn't my radio. There may be a screw under here or something. I don't think so. So I'm just gonna play with these a little bit more and see if I can get them off. All right, so I was able to get these dials off the side here uh, just by putting a little pressure with the screwdriver and then slowly and gently pulling them off with my fingers until they came off. They were on there quite tight and I really didn't want to break these plastic knobs. It's not like I can find an easy replacement for these. So with that done, uh, should be able to take off the cover. Okay, there we go. Not the easiest thing in the world to take off, let me tell you. Uh, but hopefully you can see this a little more clearly now. And there we go. So as you can see, if I rotate this one this way, it sets the alarm. Oops, the alarm just triggered. If I go all the way around. Oop, there it goes again. Anyway, this is what sets the, uh, uh, the digits here. So that gives me an idea of kind of how the the, um, the mechanism is supposed to work. Interestingly, there's a, there's a motor over here. So it could be that this particular motor has failed. Uh, it looks like it's kind of a, with some gear reduction and some other things, it looks like it's a direct drive. I was thinking there was gonna be a belt in here or something. 
that could be replaced, but I don't think so. I think it may just come down to this particular motor not working correctly. So I've taken another look at the radio just to see if there's anything I can find or as, in terms of how this is working. Um, as far as the clock, how that works, it's pretty interesting. So there's this motor, which I assume drives the timer whenever it's plugged in. I hope that's the case because that would make this easy. Maybe it's just a just a bad motor. Um, the uh, uh, there's also interestingly enough the two micro switches. So there's one here and one here, and I assume that what these are used for is um, uh, as part of the uh, the alarm mechanism, right? So you can wake up to if you set this on auto, and it looks like when this micro switch is not pressed in. Um, kind of a normally open kind of thing, then um, meaning that the alarm has been triggered, then it plays the sound, and when um, you, you turn it off, it, it stops. So it looks like simple micro switches are how they're controlling the alarm mechanism and the wake-up mechanism. So that's, that's kind of neat. Um, but I'm going to have to take this part off in order to get this motor out, so that I can see if it's getting the correct voltage. That's first of all. It looks like this is directly hardwired in, though, to the um, AC that's coming in. So this says it's a 120 volt motor. Uh, so I'm going to have to be really careful testing this. But what I want to test is just to make sure that there's not something in the connections. That would be great if it was just something in the connections where we needed to clean the wires, get everything connected again, and get it working to, to get the motor working. That would be fantastic. But that's not my first culprit. I think the first culprit is to see whether we can actually just get this motor to work. If we can, great. If not, we'll have to order a replacement motor in order to get this clock working again. Okay, so I just wanted to point something out real quick that I found interesting. I do have this plugged in. I'm being very careful not to touch any of the live voltage here uh, and highly recommend that you don't take this apart if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but one thing I found is that um, this little dial with the markings on it indicates uh, it's a speed indicator marking how fast the motor is turning. And I found that just by giving this a little bit of a spin, I can cause it to start going again. And indeed, the the um, I had this set to 12 o'clock. So just over the past few minutes of me playing with this, seeing what happens, it is indeed flipping the numbers. So um, I think what's going on here is just that the uh, the motor itself is a little bit jammed and it doesn't have quite enough uh, go to get spinning. Once it does start spinning, it seems to be fine. So what I'm going to try to do is just take out this motor and lubricate the um, uh, the shaft. Not the whole thing, but just be real careful and lubricate some of the parts that might be sticking and then put it back in and see if when I plug it in, the uh, speed indicator starts working by itself instead of having to be um, encouraged, <laughs> if you will, to start spinning. So the first thing I did once I got this motor off was the same thing I do with any motor of this type. Uh, I gave it some fine lubricant and uh, kind of got everything in there on the shaft and rotated a few times. Then I put everything back together to see if it would start by itself, but unfortunately it did not. And in case anyone's wondering what this motor is, it is a Copal. GC-1341 AC motor. So at this point, it was time for some more drastic measures. So I got some isopropyl alcohol, uh, submerged just one half of the motor where I thought the motor was getting gummed up and gave it a few good spins to see if I could loosen things up. Now, this was actually a problem because I didn't realize the uh, the markings, the timing markings were actually painted on and not a sticker. I, only, I didn't find that out until later, so that was unfortunate. However, the good news is when I reassembled everything and plugged it in, uh, the motor spun up right away uh, without any hesitation. So even though uh, I took some of that paint off, it is now working just fine. So it's time for a little reassembly. And even though this uh, machine was in good shape, it did need to be cleaned quite a bit. I wanted to make sure it was looking its best before I gave it back to its owner. 
And this being the pandemic, I just dropped this off at the front door and Kaylee was nice enough uh, later on to send me this picture of her enjoying her radio and she left me a really nice thank you note. So that's it. This really was a quick fix. I'm going to leave you with this repeating video of me when I first got this thing working. I was pretty excited. Um, but uh, yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button or subscribe to the channel. Uh, would really appreciate it if you want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or uh, you can support the channel. Just sign up on Patreon and I'd really appreciate that as well. But for now, that's all I've got. We'll see you next time on the Retro Hack Shack. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash retrohackshack and sign up 